I got a hobo soon. Hello, folks. Welcome to another show of the one and only, with the only one and only hobo, Tom. I still have yet to figure out how to script this. And unfortunately, my old microphone died. So I have to wear this stuff for at least a few more weeks. Which is kind of weird because I can hear it here, but normally the sound comes from the computer. So this mic's a little bit better, so it's going to pick up a whole bunch of noise. And I won't reverb, though. That'll be different. But I'm here to talk about some... Oh, that's right, Clash of Champions. It should have been called the Clash, the Clash of... Meh. Because the only thing productive that I did was, oh, drink a lot. That and then at the end of this video, you'll learn how to make your own homemade taco sobre, taco, taco bell crunch wrap or AM crunch wraps, whatever they call them. I forget. Yeah, I really had that much to drink. I don't think so. Well, I only got five out of 11. Uh, so let me start with the shout outs. Keith Lewis. Hello. Um, no, I can't go live. I'm in hobo punishment land. What I did with AEW was what was bad. And I have to feel ashamed for 80 more days. Ooh, actually not. Yeah. A little bit less than 80 days. So something 70 more days. I think I'll be allowed back to live stream. I want to say the beginning of, or the end of November. Enough about my woes, though. Let's talk about class Clash of Champions. It was an okay show. It was weird. Oh, and Keith Lewis, by the way, this video goes out to you. Because you asked, you're out of here. So that, wow, this mic really is pretty sensitive. Um, starts off with a pre-show. It was just kind of standard pre-show, nothing, nothing, nothing great. Uh, it was a Kofi Kingston and Randy Orton history. Then they actually started the matches pretty quickly. I know I didn't get all the pre-show because generally because the pre-show they just do a lot of talking. So I'm just like, why do I have to listen to them talk? And I was cooking breakfast, which you can see again how to make your AM crunch wraps homemade at the end of this video because there's a special encore of cooking with a hobo. Of course, that hobo is me, Hobo Tom. And one day I'll have a girlfriend, I hope, somewhere in a chair here, maybe, or over there. I don't know, we'll see. Maybe I, I'll get a new non chair, too. That's a whole other issue, though. But we start off the wrestling with the cruiserweights, as I kind of predicted. It was Drew Gulak versus Lince Dorado versus Umberto Carrero. I can never pronounce his last name right. But they start off in a dark ring, and I like what they do. Stylistically, gives it that big fight feel where they come in, it's all nice and bright for the announcement because all the belts were on the line. All minus one. Well, except for one match. They had the spotlight focus on the ring. Everything else went black. And the ring announcer would said, again, he goes, the following match is good for one fall. And it's for the cruiserweight champion. They don't have the NXT cadence down, 
which is kind of annoying. And wow, I'm not used to this on my ear. Ah, I'm only used to scratching stuff. No, I'm hindered. This will be interesting to see what happens over the next few weeks. Until I get my new mic, nice new lapel mic in. Something I could use. Yeah, if I go back to live streaming, the setup's not gonna. No bueno. But they started with a dark ring, and it was it, it was different. Um, I didn't know when I first saw this. I didn't know if they were trying to hide black crowd, because again, for the pre-show, this is when people are still coming in. So it's always hit or miss to to see how full the stadium full the stadium is. Um, so that was different. They tried something new. I think for the most part it worked once you got used to it. So let's start off with the match. Uh, let's see here. They tried to, uh, Lunde Dorado and Umberto did try to double team Drew Gulak, try to get him out of the picture. So that would be the two of them. Two Lucia Rose, that, that would have, that would have actually been a fun match. Um, the Golden Links. Fly, Lindsay, fly. Wow. Listen, I don't know why they don't feature them more or give them more time to work, especially for these pre-show matches. They could have done so much more instead of just talking. And I think this match was only like 10 minutes. On 205 Live, this would have been an amazing 20, 25 minute long match. But, I don't know. They, WWE just seems to drop to ball on pay-per-views, especially if it's not the, the not, not their A-level pay-per-view. Although this should be. I mean, Clash of Champion goes back to WCW. I think they used to have a free two to three hour show hour on I would say the one of the Turner stations. I don't think it was TBS. It might have been well, it might have been TBS. I don't think it was TNT. Or the other one. That's eluding me right now. Only because I do remember watching WCW in college via an old black and white TV with, with actually the, the rabbit ear antennas. So it goes back then, but uh, Bruno Carrero, oh, so smooth, smooth in the ring. See, this is weird because normally I'm used to like a two second delay when I talk. Now I can hear exactly what I'm saying. This is freaky. It'll freak me out for a couple weeks. Now, he was caught walking up the rope. It was, a, listen, walking up the ropes, at least he didn't hurt himself. Uh, Drew Gulak kind of threw him off it. They they stopped, they they kind of skipped that spot. Even if that was the, the that was spot, it was still pretty good, though. Um, again, just so quick in the ring, and Drew Gulak slows everything down. I mean, eventually everyone's on the outside all the time. Flying people all over the place. Uh, see here. Umberto pins Lindsay, but broken up by Gulak. Eventually, Gulak, Drew Gulak does put on the Cyclone something. I was just finishing cooking, so I kind of missed the ending. I just heard, Drew Gulak retains his title. And from what I saw, it was a good match. It was a good cheeseburger match. It just felt, I don't know, too short. And then they actually had a second match on the pre-show. And I was really shocked at this one. I just need a little sip of... There. There's my orange crush over there. Uh, it was AJ Styles versus Cedric Alexander. What are these two doing on the pre-show? Maybe AJ wanted to go home early. Georgia can't be that far away from Charlotte. <laughs> and Carl Anderson just wanted to see his hot Asian wife. 
Um, but this match again, AJ uh, Cedric starts off with a Michinoki driver on AJ. He wants to get this match done quick. He wants there's someone who wants to go home. Um, every time, a quick strike, boom, went to pin, boom, went to pin, until he makes the mistake of going outside. AJ kind of baits him outside. I forget what happened, but AJ Styles put him in the Styles Clash on the outside of the ring. Wow. That was impressive. Threw him in. It is like, uh uh. Pulled him up by the hair. I'm not done with you yet, boy. Uh, then you try to put on the calf crusher. AJ hits that neck breaker of his, which is so good. And that was kind of it for Cedric's offense. Because then he went to the calf crusher. Cedric, Cedric, to his credit, did try to reverse the calf crusher. Then AJ hits the phenomenal forearm, picks him up for a second Styles Clash, and AJ beats Cedric Alexander clean. So AJ retains his US title. So right now, no titles have changed hands. And <laughs> they have that whole thing of no one wins in their hometown. Yeah, I think they did that. I always forget where Kofi's built from. Yeah, I forget. But this was a cheeseburger match. Again, it's just with these two. Just seems so short. And then, of course, the club comes out. They got to beat up on Cedric some more. Because let's go beat up Cedric Alexander. I mean, I can see if they had like one or two interviews. But it was. Each was just so long. And now the two matches, they could have cut out half that nonsense. Like given both matches at least 20 minutes. And then you have 20 minutes of filler, so that's pretty good. I will say this, and I think I mentioned it when I was cooking. The one thing AEW does right is that they don't have a pre-show. They only have oh, little fillers, like maybe 5, 10 minutes at most for their pre-show. But then they go right to wrestling. Granted, they have to work on that. And I think it would have helped, would have helped them in their cause if they, one, explained the rules of the Battle Royal because it just seemed confusing. Two, you can actually do an intro of your wrestlers and each wrestler can have a promo when they pick their card. So as an audience, you can say, hey, so that's what this person is. Okay. I I understand this better now. Instead, I think they do like a quick 15-second thing. And yeah, it's not that good. And, I, and I'm going to be fidgeting with this for another 10 minutes at least. But then we get into the first, the first match of the proper card. It was Seth and Braun versus um, Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode. Seth has to work on his facials because when I saw him in the ring, he had loose face on already. Once I saw that, I'm like, oh, he's losing. Time for a nap. Uh, it was a decent enough match. Uh, when Braun was in there, Braun Root started off. Braun was just toss people around. Root can get tossed around, too. He doesn't mind being tossed around. Then Root had had a win face on though. He knew he was he was going home with those titles. Uh, Seth and Braun then they did double team, which was actually really good when they used each other as a weapon. It was fun. Um, Dolph does that jumping spike DDT on the outside, and he tried in the ring. That looks really good. Um, again, kind of a weird looking, not working Lucha Destroyer. By Dolph. Again, that's something you really have to practice. Uh, Braun did get the hot tag. Starts to run over people, but then, of course, 
He gets thrown into his own partner, Seth Rollins, who's a legal man. Uh, <laughs> rude. Bobby Robert Rude's so awesome. Actually, he's not awesome. He's glorious. Because eventually he did get the glorious EDT on Seth Rollins. Pick this right. Dolph. Dolph Ziggler and Robert Root are new WWE Raw Tag Team Champions. Actually a pretty decent match. It's a good cheeseburger of a match. And by the way, Robert Root. I'm going to upgrade him. He is the second best spine buster. Arn Anderson is, of course, number one. But Robert Roode, definitely number two. And then we had our Charlotte Flair versus Bailey match. And Charlotte Flair again started this match off the way Cedric did. She went for the big boot, tried to get the quick pin. <laughs> In a funny, <laughs> funny, terrible, sexist moment. Uh, Charlotte scooped up Bailey, and I swear when, when you when, when she scooped him up, yeah, you put the one leg between the legs, cradle the head. Those fingers, instead of being up, oh, got curled in. We in the wrestling people call that checking the oil. Wow. Charlotte, good for you. You got a chunk of that booty, though. And the body slam. Woo! Um, it, was a, it was a quick match. Bailey pulled a Yano. Bailey got dropped head first into the bottom shirt buckle. She was laying there. Charlotte Flair started to strut. Uh, started to distract the referee. Bailey undid the bottom turnbuckle, tossed the pad away. No one saw what happened. Charlotte ate an exposed bottom turnbuckle, Yano style, and Bailey picked up the heel win. And again, a quick match. I mean, if Bailey is going to be heel. She has to go full heel. Because if not, she's just... Well, she's still heel, but... I don't know. It's not... It makes people hate her for the wrong reasons, I think. It's like, you just cheated. But yet you go around giving high fives? People will be confused and it'll be like, I don't want anything to do with her. So it was a ham sandwich of a match. It was Revival versus a New Day. Uh, Revival, it, um, I'm sorry, Xavier is sporting a knee brace, so he has a bad knee. Starts off kind of as a brawling match. Again, the new, again, Revival smart. They go, sorry, start to go after Xavier Woods. Bad knee. Oh, and I saw Jack the Jobber sign. Jack the Jobber. I actually met Jack the Jobber at WrestleMania here in Orlando. Seems like a nice guy. We talked wrestling for a little bit. He asked me what I thought about it. I said it was okay. I think my nephew enjoyed it more, although I think my nephew enjoyed the fact that he got a snow cone with a marshmallow in it. So, hey, he was happy. I was okay. Again, it was just overpriced, though. I even think I told him that the matches were okay. This ma The one match was really good. The other match was eh. The tickets, if I didn't get them for free, I wouldn't go. But that's the way that goes. Oh, this has the same disease as the other microphone, Yonitis. But again, it was kind of a brawling match revival. They're so good with their tag team work, it's just not even funny. Uh, Xavier, again, he, he just looks so beat up. Again, a good corner mauling. 
on Big E by the Revival. Again, they're smart. The Shatter Machine on the outside to Big E. Big E tries to help his buddy Xavier, and, and not happening. Uh, eventually, towards the end, they do hit the Shatter Machine on Xavier. They do not finish Xavier off with it, though. They put in the knee bar on his bad knee and make him tap. And they do that to win the belt. So we have a new SmackDown Tag Team Champion. And again, this was a f fun match. It's a cheeseburger match. And the only reason I say that is that up to this point, this could have been like a good Raw. And that was about it. Then they went up stage, they cut a promo, and it was okay. Then in the back, we have Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross being interviewed by Charlie. Oh, dude, they're so funny. And they actually wore matching outfits, so it makes them look that much more adorable. And I was on Discord, and it's just like, you should see the comments posted about those two. And <laughs> I'll talk about that shortly. Then our truth was the gaff boy. He was the guy holding kind of the gaff mic. Uh, Alexa Bliss eventually just <laughs> Alexa Bliss knew exactly who he was. Our truth knew her as, as the shorter Carmelo. And Alexa Bliss just grabbed the mic and said, "Hey, if you're looking for the twenty four seven championship, he's." You're looking for R-Truth. He's here with his 24-7 seven champ belt. So that was kind of fun. Um, then the next match, it was Fire and Desire with Mandy Rose and Boo Sonya Deville. Takes on Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss for the women's tag team belt. I mean, the crowd was poo-pooing this match. But in a kind of comical way. I know it starts off where Manny Rose tried to do her little hip thing. So Nikki Cross was having none of it. She just like punched her right. She slapped her right in the face. And that was so good. And then she said Nikki Cross started to wiggle her hips. Yes, 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 yes. And that was the best. Best moment of this match because everything else was, yeah. Uh, that slap to face was great. <laughs> what was? It? They were bronzer, bronzer shaming Mandy Rose. That was kind of funny. Alexa, it was for for a brief part. The twenty four seven loser locker room showed up. Alexa almost became a twenty four seven champion. That was fun. I think the crowd. Was chanting H L A. Hot lesbian action. For those of you that don't know what it is, um, I don't know. I just can't get excited over Sonya Deville. Boo, Sonya Deville. And Mandy Rose. Yeah. Yeah, this was a short match. Uh, next, uh, <laughs> I was going to say Alexa Cross, but. Or, or, or Nikki Bliss. <laughs> uh, Nikki Cross hit the draping neck breaker, not the spring neck breaker that she's been doing. And it was it was okay. There were some splashes. I don't know. Just not there. I don't know. It was a ham sandwich. Most of this whole pay-per-view was like, meh. Did pick up, though. Um, the Miz took on Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, Sammy... Zane. Sammy Zane starts his own commentary. Actually, he, he was probably the most entertaining part of the commentary, because I'll tell you what, commentary sucks. All they do, for the most part, when it's not that good of a match, or when it's not that good perceived match, they just argue amongst themselves and they take away from what's going on in the ring. 
And it's just like, really? I hope no one gets put on the new show and they all get sent out doing house shows at NXT. Oh, wow, that would be a... Or, or be relegated down to main event status. Yeah, commentary sucks, though. Uh, some of it's funny, some of it's like, why? But uh, Sami Zayn was doing his own commentary, which is better than theirs. Actually, they cut off Sami's mic. Uh, Miz was going after Shinsuke Nakamura. Eventually, Miz tossed Sami's mic somewhere up towards the stage, which is kind of fun. Um, Miz can hold his own, though. Granted, he is the king of soft style. He did mock Shinsuke Nakamura. He can hit the kicks, and Sami mean, actually hit the last kick for a change. And he does a double axe handle from the top rope. I like my old school moves too. And the cell is terrible. Um, I just want to know why and how Sammy can really shake his head even and, and have a neck brace. And he didn't have the neck brace on fully. Which is kind of weird and confusing. But hey, wrestling! Uh, then Seer. The Miz hit the Skull Crusher finale. And Sammy distracted the ref. Shinsuke eventually hit a Kinshasa to the back of Miz's head. Shinsuke Nakamura retains his icy belt. Uh, it was okay. I mean, it's a ham sandwich. This whole show was up to this match was meh. Not even that. Even this match was this match was actually the match of the night. This is a Sasha Banks versus Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's Championship belt. And tell you what, Becky just slapped poor Sasha Banks right in the face. That was really good. Then there were, of course, the dueling chants of let's go Sasha, let's go Becky. Or let's go Becky, Sasha Banks. Or something like that. So that was pretty cool. Um, uh, Becky was just being super aggressive. They were cursing because they tried to bleep it out a little bit. Uh, Sasha. Sasha got n nailed in the baby maker. Because what happened was that Sasha Banks was going up to the top rope. As she as she jumped off the top rope. Okay, so so you have Sasha Banks' legs on, on top rope. You have you have Becky slowly getting up. Sasha jumps off. Becky Yeah, and the are like right there in the front part. Below the the belt, because you could tell because because Sasha was not grabbing her midsection; she was grabbing something else. So she got nailed there, and she just spent, I'll say, a good minute just on the ground holding herself. So I don't know what's going to happen with that backstage. If that was just. Oh, you're, you're too short, or you jump too tall, or I couldn't jump tall. I'm sure it happens. I'm sure people have been inadvertently hitting the front part, both ma male and female. <laughs> it's, it's never perfect. You try to limit what mistakes you make. I'll tell you what, uh, she, yeah, she, she got nailed in the coots. Then there was a back statement, which was reversed into a a back a back exploder that was really good, and then you could just hear it. It's like it's my turn to call spot. It's my turn now. It's my turn to call spots now. Um, Sasha was screaming. She's still having her hissy fits. It was a decent back and forth a while. Sasha goes for the chair, throws one chair in, distracts the referee with that chair. Now Specky Lynch with the other chair. Becky Lynch is like, I've had enough of this nonsense. And there's only one woman with the shiniest wizard. Because they said she had the shiniest wizard. I'm like, no. There's only one woman with the shiniest, Nixon, shiniest wizard. That's Nixon Newell. Or Tegan Knox. But I'll, she'll only be remembered by Hobo Tom as Nixon Newell. 
the girl with the shiniest wizard. I have her autograph and her picture. I have funny stories about her too, which is cool. Uh, so Eddie Eddie Grower does live through Sasha vicariously through Sasha Banks. Again, Becky Becky just didn't care. She nailed. She 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 went to go swing the chair. Sasha Banks moved. She nailed the ref. And then it was just a DQ finish, baby. But they didn't care. They just kept on fighting all over the place. That was really good. You hear the crowd chant, chant, let them fight. The only thing this match needed, well, it needed two things. One, they had to do headshots. There are ways to take a protected headshot. They have to figure out how to do protected headshots. And eventually, one of these women, the foreheads are too smooth. They got to they gotta show some Zeus. Eventually, one day they have to get, they have to, they have to do the blade job, and they can do it right. So many other women have done it before, so I know it's like Ooh, women cutting themselves. Who cares? It's a wrestling match. It's wrestling, wrestle, wrestle. Um, overall, though, I'll tell you what: this match was a turning point for me because then I finally got excited. This was a surf and turf match. And there would have been some some blood, baby. A little meth. I would have given it a flaming yon ranking. It's pretty good. And then we had Randy Orton and versus Kofi Kingston for the WWE Championship. It was a kind of a slow, deliberate pace by Randy Orton. Uh, Kofi tries to speed it up. And when Kofi did speed it up, again, he was very successful at it. When Randy Orton slowed it down, he had the upper hand. Makes sense. Uh, Kofi took that hard bump into the barricade, though. That was shocking. Orton, <laughs> Orton needs to break the Spanish announce table. Because they were going after the German announce table and, and the main announce table. Uh, and Kofi does eventually make his comeback. Was, uh, Randy Orton, he did that next stretch backbreaker thing. I think I've seen him do it like once before. It was so long ago. So again, whenever you can see something new show up, that's always good. Um, you could tell that they were telling each other spots. So, I mean, I can appreciate the build of the match. Kofi Kingston won. And I could have sworn this was going to be my lock. Because Randy Orton really could use that belt. It would really f fuel this feud. To definitely hell in a cell. If not Survivor Series or beyond. But overall, I mean, Kofi Kingston Big Cup did pick up the win and retain his belt. It was a cheeseburger match. And then we saw King Booker backstage with the Street Profits. And I'll tell you what, the one thing that I'm really beginning to dislike about the WWE is that they run so many promos and ads during their pay-per-view. Granted, now, I didn't pay for it. But if you're going to pay for it, you're like, the heck's all this garbage? I mean, this is why you watch TV. So that's it's just too much for me. I mean, I don't mind when they do like a minute promo to get ready for the match. Like, probably a good example would be when the Macho Man used to do his promos. It'd be like it would be like a minute long promo, and then all of a sudden, you know, he was ready. Oh yeah, I gotta go with the ring. Oh yeah, already you're not a hundred percent. I'm I'm two hundred percent. So that's the way it used to be, at least. And then it was a Rowan versus Roman Reigns. Again, a hard-hitting, hard brawling match. Um, Roman did hit the drive fight, which is always good to see. Normally he misses it. Um, and then someone's going through someone's table. 
So they were setting that up. Uh, Rowan, he's really quick for a big guy. They had the table spot. They were brawling all throughout the ring area. Uh, Roman Reigns did do that strength when he actually picked up Rowan for the Samoan drop. That was pretty cool. And then all of a sudden, Luke Harper shows up. Whoa, and the crowd goes crazy. And uh, Rowan eventually did win. So they'll continue this for a while. Maybe Luke Harper was the... Oh, what do they call it? Assistant. Chaos. Um, accomplice. Accomplice, that's right. Is he accomplice to, to Rowan? Overall, it was a good match. It was a nice twist to see Luke Harper there. Hey, let's twist. Gets a cheeseburger then. And in the main event of the evening, which only took, I think, about 10 minutes, which it was okay. Braun Strowman versus Seth Rollins. Braun just starts off by tossing Seth all over the place. Crowd died off early. Because Seth, when Seth made his comeback, the crowd's like, really? We have to sit through this? Ooh. Um, eventually, it took three, it was uh, three stomps and three kickout attempts. Finally, it was a pedigree and a fourth stomp. And this is all because Braun did a splash, but tweaked this knee. I have no idea how you do that. But eventually, Seth did hit a pedigree and, a, and, a, and another stomp and pinned Braun Strowman, the monster among men. So even though they lost their tag team belt, Seth retains his championship. And thank you, Bray Wyatt. The Fiend comes out. Uh, Sister Abigail. Seth Rollins at the top of the stage. Mandible Claw Seth Rollins at the top, top of the stage. Overall, though, this was a ham sandwich. And that was Clash of Champions. You can tell by the expression on my face that was it was an amazing show and that I should not have done what I did with AEW and I could have live streamed Triple Mania or, or, or triple triple A at MSG instead of watching this. Yes. It's that exciting. I'll give this pay per view overall a ham sandwich. I mean, if it wasn't for the Becky Lynch Sasha Banks match, this would have been lousy. Again, I'm just happy I don't pay for stuff. And that was Clash of Champions. Again, you can always let me know what you think, either by comment or email. And remember, this guy, Hobo Tom, will be back live streaming probably that last Friday in November, if not that first week in December. And then programming is going to change up a little bit once AEW and NXT go on normal TV. And I might something like that. I have to figure out. Oh, this Friday. That's going to compete. Oh, shoot. That's going to compete with Impact. Uh-oh. Ooh. I have to make choices in life. I'll tell you what impact is get is growing on me. SmackDown, man. SmackDown can be good. SmackDown can either be one of it can be either very good or very bad. NXT, all I'm going to see on Thursday when I go to the house show here in Daytona Beach. And I'll put that video up probably Thursday night, Friday morning ish. In with my review on it. I want to see what they do for house shows. That will be very telling. And then Roz stays the same. So that was it. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Remember, there's a little bonus on how to make your own AM Crunch Wraps. And have a 
Good good night, morning, something-ish. Bye. And I will get used to these and sound a little more professional. Bye. Welcome back to another show of the Hobo's Kitchen. Yes. Um, it's kind of a little bit of a special day. So here, I guess I'll set you right up there. The only reason it's a special day is because it's Clash of Champions. And for a change, every, I haven't made one of these videos in a while. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to attempt to recreate a Taco Bell tradition. And that is, I'm going to make AM Contrast because it is, it is breakfast time for me for the most part. So, um, again, if you've never ever had an AM Crunch Trust, it's actually probably one of the best things at Taco Bell. You can wake up in the morning and get there. Seriously, my eggs are still good because they don't go bad until the 29th. But again, very typically, I have my burrito shells. Um, I'm going to have four of them, so I have my four eggs. And instead of sausage, I'm kind of switching it up a little bit. I just have bratwurst patties, sausage. It's a big thick sausage pile. And of course, it's not complete without hash browns. And the kind of noise you hear in the background is here. I want extra sharp cheese for my food. And very simply, I just have some sharp cheddar cheese. And I'm gonna get things started. So very simply, Yes, very simplistic idea here. I keep things very simple. Oh, my Bud Light mug. Um, I set my oven. I set it to like 420. If you're noise in the background watching the, the pre-show, I think the only good thing about being on my ban is that I don't have to cover the pre-show anymore, which is what I used to do. And if I open this up, I'm going to put um, actually a whole bunch of patties down because this is also going to be kind of snack. So, one, two, three. So that's the four I need to fit my crunch wrap. And I think, just a fat bastard anyway. One, two. Yeah, I'll figure out. I have to make this work somehow. Let's see here. That's close enough. Four. So I'm just going to cook them all and then eventually whatever I have, I'll just kind of leave in the oven. Or I'll figure something out with them. So I have the oven warming up. The first thing I always do, potatoes in the oven. The next step. So the dogs are being really yappy next door. Oh shoot, that's right. Uh, yeah, I'll be fine for just a little bit. I have to close up the windows. I just realized I opened them last night because I have to start my laundry eventually. I'll close these up because I'll be in and out. Be outside. Yeah, this camera has no filter and you can hear the dogs out now. They're barking at something. Uh, what I always do, do you want some outside time? I'm sure my cat somewhere. I'm gonna let her get some outside time. Me. Oh no, she doesn't like the dogs that much. There's the grill. Take the, take the old grill cover off. My fire stick. Two down. Drunk said gas. Hope gas works. This is an old grill, so. I kind of have to do things. Oh, look at that! Yeah. Guess what, guys? We're all getting cooked. I just realized there were some ants in the grill. Some grilled ants, too. So I do this because... Only because the... Sequence thing, I think, is not set right. So I'm going to let all those ants slowly die. Very painful, gruesome death. 
Last night I had surf and turf, which is always good. So a little bit of salmon up there. Yeah, unfortunately here in Florida, nothing but ants, so it's kind of hard. Kind of have to deal with things as they go. Again, I'll wait till that gets a pretty specific temperature. Who's that? What do you want? Huh? Sniff? Sniff? You want to go outside? The dogs are out there though. I'll just leave you inside for now. Because if not, I think one, one day the neighbor's dog actually got inside the house. Or he, he, the dog jumped the fence. Or got underneath the fence. Chased the cat into an eye. My cat got all super fuzzy. All super archy. And all kinds of hair standing up. Let's give her some pats. Got her hair standing all up. Smacked the dog in the face. And the poor puppy dog left, run, left running. But again, because this is a special show, um, every so often I might click in and out. There's always the rum, folks. Rum's important. And just to let everyone know that I'm kind of doing this because all they're doing, honestly, it's just talking. So this is just kind of like, yeah. It's a hobo office. Yeah. So nothing exciting is happening. Um, I'm going to let the grill warm up for a couple of minutes. And I'll be back. Ooh, for neat, neat kitten chat. I'll be back. Now, the grill is at about 400 some, something degrees. To get just some butter out. So we're going to head on outside. I'm going to put my... Brat wrist patties down on the grill because these probably do take even though they're. Huh, who's that? Who's that? So even though they're at least unfrozen, they're thawed out, I still like to cook anything with pork, even if it's just like patty size, really just for about a good solid 10 minutes. Uh, generally, at, longer than that. It's way overcooked. Anything other than that tends to be raw-ish. Back out here. Again, you can see the grill is actually almost 500 degrees, which is, to me, the better. The hotter it is, the better it is. For the most part, the shorter cooking time kills all the bacteria, because E. coli is very nasty stuff. And... You can hear that sizzle a little bit, which is always good. Those patties all eventually kind of move around a little bit as they really cook, especially on the bottom part. I'll flip them probably after about five minutes. The hot part, move them five minutes at the top where it's a little cooler so they don't fully burn. Close that up and head back inside and begin prepping a few more things. Remember, this is just one part. The dogs are going crazy because they, they smell food cooking. The next thing I'm going to do, because I think they're still having, I know they were just talking about the Kofi Kingston, Randy Orton history. So, yeah, Kofi Kingston's still talking, so. I don't think I'll actually, I don't think I'd actually get another copyright strike because of this. Yep, because actually, remember, I'm doing this because I did something I probably shouldn't have done. AEW has a lot better encrypting software than I thought they did. Again, after you use any raw product, especially pork, you always wash your hands. Let me get my little towel just to dry my hands off. I'm start getting things a little bit ready here. My cheese, my eggs, my burrito shells. Ooh, so good, burrito shells. Now, burrito shells are always kind of, to me, they're always, I don't know, they're always that weird kind of semi rawish. So, what I like to do, honestly, just 10 seconds in the microwave.
Now well, that's going to turn my burner on to about a six. And if you're using gas, I think it's kind of more so like along the lines of medium. And you have to grease your pan up, and I have to remember. And oh, that should be good. So again, just a little grease there. So one shell. Again, I only do it for about 10 seconds. It softens it up a little bit without getting it nice and hard. It's going to go on the master kind of prep tray for crunch wraps. So that means that little beep you heard in the background meant my oven hit it. Get that butter nice and liquidy. And you can have kind of whatever eggs you like. I just like, um, for this kind of breakfast, I like to have uh, my eggs fried. So I just use a little bit of butter. Shell there. Time. Three more minutes left. So again, just kind of spread the butter up evenly. And I think they're still talking about whatever's next going to happen. Because this is just a kickoff show. Um, the one thing I do like about AEW is that they actually their pre-show to their pay-per-views at least have wrestling matches involved. They're just not talking throughout the entire thing, even though, even though they might kind of introduce a match. Uh, the one real fault, well, there was a couple faults. The one fault I think I noted and a couple other people did as well. So that's eggs ready again. I just take it. There we go. It's going to cook. I think, just like I was saying, the one real fault what I find with AEW is that they don't really do a good job of explaining stuff because they do have their own battle royal with its own set of rules and it's semi-confusing to the point they're not really sure well why are these five people coming in it's like I think the one thing AEW should have done at least for some of their at least their first show my other shows just kind of explain how how they pick and even just like as like a get to know the wrestler part they probably should have had the wrestlers pick the cards themselves and that way it gives us a little bit of an introduction to the wrestlers i was like oh okay i i understand how this works now then they should have a timer crowds like to count stuff 10 9 8 7 6 5 Four, three, two, one. Bah. Crowds like that stuff. You have to appeal to the crowds a little bit. Now the egg's cooking. I'm gonna make my first crunch wrap here. You can tell the egg's cooking a little bit. That's gonna be my first burrito shell there. Get this cheese opened up. Get this out of the microwave. And actually, worse comes to worst, if I have to, I can use this little relatively clean space in my kitchen. Space that's open a little bit. Maybe just get a little bit more of a wipe down. So really, after I make one, I'm just kind of repeating everything for the next four. I'm going to put that towel on. Holy! There we go. In probably about five minutes, I'll flip the sausage. I'll be right back. Let's see here. So now it's it's the it's the whole Rowan pre whole Rowan thing. I'll write that down in a moment. Um, you can hear the egg cooking, so I'll have kind of my station set up here. And I'm gonna have four of them. The eggs cooking. Let that cook just a little bit longer. So you get out a spatula. Flip set sausages with. Well, that's a big one too. That one's good enough for now. That's fine. Sausages don't care what size special you use. They don't care, I don't care. 
that. Here. And I was like, because I like fried eggs. If I coated this pan right, oh, that's actually pretty decent. So flip. And I'll show you what I do with the. I do need a breakfast dish. I'll show you what I do with the overall presentation of it once. I think it's going to go egg, egg, cheese, sausage, cheese, hash brown cheese. So that should be pretty close to the way I want to make it. Yeah, if you don't like cheese, you don't have to add cheese if you like cheese sauce instead. I like the real deal cheese. That kind of part's all up to you. And I think because I used to work in the seafood department and meat department and grocery stores I'm just so much more used to using knives instead of other stuff. Here we go, so this egg's done. Came out actually pretty good. Ooh, yeah. So I'm gonna go right on the burrito shell. So let me go see, I'll be right back. Now they're just having more ads for what's coming. Again, once the butter kind of starts melting, spread that around. And it's on six, so that way it takes us a little while. Crack an egg, put that on the pan. Then you can have a broken yolk, full yolk. I don't know, that's all up to you. I, I like mine broken. I think that's the way it's been for a while with me. We're gonna let that cook. Not going to take long, and it's been about five minutes, so it's time to get a yield spatula. Shall I put a slice of cheese on there first? So I'm building that. Let's go. Eggs going. One's kind of ready. Let's go take a look at the sausages. See, how, sausage patties, bratwurst patties. Yeah, I know it's not breakfast sausage, but you know what? It's Probably better and a little bit harder for you. Oh, there's a cat. See, I always wear my flip flops when I'm outside. Grass is kind of weird. Ooh, nice smoky smell to it. Again, nice and hot. That's what I like to see. And you can see it. For the most part, these are probably almost done cooking. So, what I like to do, they don't get totally burnt. A little burnt's okay. Come up down that top rack to finish cooking. I feel I've done this before because I have some skills. And actually, I don't want these to cook too much. I want to set those more towards the side. And a little bit more. So again, it's one of those things you have to be kind of health conscious, realize you don't want to eat undercooked pork, that's probably bad for you, that would probably get me, me fired. Well, that would, well, I wouldn't be fired, but I'd probably get sick and that would be the end of that. And they're still kind of talking about stuff. Egg looks done to me. That on over. Now a couple more seconds, and it's just going to kind of be a repeat. Get everything going is pretty good, and you know what? I'll get back once we get to the sausage part. So I say battery life and video life. Be back. So the people at WWE pull a fast one on me. So they have the kind of match going on. Um, right now they're in rest hold. It's Drew Gulak has very slow. For most part, has control of the match. I have the volume set fairly high, so I'll be able to hear it. So now the sausage is done. I have my last egg going. So it's time to pull the sausage from the grill. And to some degree, I'm going to start building up my crunch wrap. 
So what I always do first, turn off the main gas because that's good. It saves that tank so we don't screw stuff up. Turn off my burner so there's no leakage. Uh, I said the leakage. There we go. Oh, look at that delicious sausage. Oh, I like mine just a little charred. To me, I'd rather have it just slightly charred. Not so much hockey puck looking. It's pretty good, so I'll let this kind of chill out for a little bit. I think the only thing I really do need to do, I think my cat's in the house somewhere. Oh, but there she is, she's just kind of being bored. So I'm gonna flip the egg. Oh, something big happened. So I have our sausage out. Flying flippy stuff happening, folks. Well, everyone's outside. See here. See here. Everyone's on the outside. This is his chance. He has to act now. The outside. Missile drop kick. Oh, there's a burner going to win. Oh, broken up by Gulak. Able to break the count. Smart move by Gulak, learning from his mistakes earlier, getting there for the save this time. Again, no champion's advantage. Drew Gulak does not have to be factored in the decision to lose his title. It's Broken out. Gulak, what he has to do here is play defense. He's got to break up these pins, and he has to keep the game open so that he can look for the opportune moments of strike. Okay, well, at that point, yeah, he's to go on the offense. Kind of put this up. He's got to take a risk. Absolutely. More so I can hear it. So now, for the most part, I'm going to start building. Nice stuff, because that's done, so I'm turning this burner off. Eggs. This goes right in the sink. Now what I need to do, I'm actually going to leave the, the temperature on where it is. Because the next step, I'm being so disrespectful to the poor luchadors trying to do their stuff, but that's what they get for doing stuff way too early. So now I have my cheese. Sausage. Line. And cheese on top of that. And if anyone wants to know, these are actually bacon and cheese stuffed bratwurst patties. So I get all my breakfasty goodness on everything. So I'm going to let that burner just cool off just a little bit because I'll show you what I'm going to do now. So now that that's set up, everything's kind of set up, you need a hot glove. And what I'm going to do So now I have these done Ooh, nice Ooh, hot too Really hot One each, I'll have at least something to snack on throughout the rest of the matches you can make these yourselves. I just got these store bought only because it's a little bit easier. Super kick party and cheese on top. No such thing as too much cheese, folks. So, super huracana. 
Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to set, so I'm going to set these aside, these other ones aside, because that's going to be kind of the appetizer, because hey, there's nothing wrong with having plenty of hash browns to nibble on, especially for, especially for a wrestling match. Nope, no Aztec press. Gulak retains, folks. Gulak retains. I'm just going to write that down. Gulak retains. short of a match. Only because I know when it started and it should have gone probably a lot longer. Okay, so now I'm going to take this. Start, you just really start to kind of fold it as best you can. That kind of classic star shape. It's not going to be perfect because remember these are homemade. So you have one. And I'll show you how I'm going to actually kind of press them. They go back in the oven really just for a few minutes. Set that there. Bring in the next one. And it's okay if it kind of unfolds. It's going to happen. Again, I don't work at Taco Bell, so I'm not exactly sure how they do this. Might will probably be more squared off, more like a burrito, I guess. But Actually, so what you can do, you actually take these, you turn them upside down. And have you... And the reason why you do that, oh, that has a little break, is that that's actually going to keep that fold in place. Um, I do not know the six star shaped way you do it. I figure this is a fold. This is just a quick fold. Again, if I worked at Taco Bell, I'd probably know all the secrets and they'd probably fire me for the divulging company secrets. Uh, right now they're just doing a Charlotte Flair promo. So what I did, I kind of folded them upside down and sealed them up. So now, remember this hot pan? This is going to act as a press that goes up top, and this whole thing goes in the oven really just for probably not even five minutes. So that's just to get a little crunch on it. We'll come back in five minutes and see how things look. So right now, I have a press on them. I don't, uh, if you have a, a panini press, that would probably work better. I don't, so while that's going on, I'm going to clean up a little bit. Again, uh, we just saw the cruiserweight match. It was kind of fun. To, I'll say it's a cheeseburger of a match, mainly because for some reason on 205 Live, they seem to be so much longer. And they just seem, I don't know, just seem to be more fun. So actually while I'm doing that, we're gonna put you put you over here. And I'm gonna have a version of a Miami sunset. Um, or I think I've also heard this called a hard crush. And it all depends on what you're using. Um, I had a I had a cold glass here. A nice chill glass. I'm gonna fill that up. The SmackDown Women's Champion. The SmackDown Women's Champion. Woo! So we're going to fill this up with ice, and I think this has been referred to as an orange crush. The most, and the reason why is because all the classic orange soda crush, and you call it, you call it the orange crush, well mainly because you add some kind of boost to it. Belly! Hey, belly! Ooh. Ah! I want to know. Oh, did I actually get Orange Crush now? You can use Orange Crush soda if you want. You can use Orange Jet. I think when I did my grocery shopping, they were out of Orange Jet, so I just, I'm just using Sunkiss soda. You can use any, really any orange soda you want. So here, you always pour for about four seconds. One, two, three, four. 
And so you have about, say, an inch of booze in there. Top with soda. DTA, don't trust anyone. Wait a second. Was that Sasha Banks voice during a promo? Woo. I don't know, they're just having some good promo, so let's. So really, that's all we need. That's all the time you really need for the AM crunch wraps. Because really, remember, you're not. They're, everything's already cooked. Let me pull those out. And they should be pretty good looking. Turn the oven off. Hot glove. Oh wow, that's actually really freaking hot. We're 15 minutes away, so that's pretty cool. Let's see here. So, wow, that was actually really hot for a change. There we go. Yeah, this glove just came to heat up. Oh, wow, those are actually crunch. Those are actually kind of toasty. And kind of toasty feeling. That actually are kind of toasty because I heard a little crunch to it. So let's see how they turn out. All right, the first one for the most part is never a good one. Oh wow, these are. These are actually pretty toasty. That is good. So that's off. So, ooh, look at that. Now it's time to work a little bit on presentation. So, let me go get this plate while that's going under cold water. So for Clash of Champions, what we have tonight, folks, we have the Breakfast of Champions. Probably one of the better breakfasts, at least probably one of the more unique breakfasts out there. That is the AM Crunch, a homemade AM Crunch Wrap with a orange crush and a side of hash browns. So let's take a look and see how this looks. There we go, folks. And again, so again, you have your nice, actually kind of really toasty, crispy stuff. Hash browns, orange crush. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. And if you have any food you would want to see the hobo, the one, the only hobo Tom we create, please feel free to leave a comment and or email. And I'll see everyone Monday for my Monday Night Raw show. Again, I'm putting this at the end of Clash of Champions. So everyone, enjoy Clash of Champions. Be safe. Don't do anything stupid like I did. Don't share with friends, or if you do, just have a party. And I'll see everyone tomorrow. Bye.